Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the wonderful, talented, and kind and generous for her time today, Chef Charity George. Miss Charity, it is wonderful to have you today. Thank you so much for jumping on really quick and talking us to us today. Thanks for having me. It's quite a pleasure. I love talking to students, so... Yes, uh, I was. I about jumped out of my seat when I linked in with you, and you were like, "Oh yeah, no problem, let's talk." And I was like, <laughs> "Pumping hey, the." Hey, I've done it too. I have. I've done the exact same thing. I've connected with some huge people, like CEOs on companies. I'm like, "Really? Shut up! That's awesome." Yeah. No, I agree. And that's a quick, it's a quick plug, really quick, for connecting and networking with people, guys. It really does pay off in the end to just know people casually. You never know when you could help someone or they could help someone else too, so. That is literally, I don't even remember where I just said this, but I said that the other, I don't know, a week or so ago. So I think somebody was filming me for something, but I said, that's one of the biggest things I think I've done in my career because I had a really good mentor early on and mm-hmm. they told me, you need to network. You need to keep up with your connections and you know scratch each other's back, whatever. But you keep those things up and it'll it'll pay off and oh my heavens has it. Well, I'm glad to hear that too. I'm a full believer in that too. And I think students need to hear that too. So, oh, well, Charity, first of all, uh, I don't know if I've officially introed, but you have many jobs, but could you just tell us a little bit about, first of all, you know, your, your, who you are and, you know, maybe one of your 30 jobs to talk about, because I think you have <laughs> a, a, an exciting life and you obviously live a life of passion and and putting it out there. So let's, we're, we're anxious to hear like, well, what do you got going on in your life? <laughs> okay. Well, for starters, I am a pastry chef, cake artist. I live in San Diego, California. So right there, I'm sorry, because I know y'all are dealing with some ugly weather and you can see the sun shining in through the window. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> uh, hey, believe me, I pay for it dearly. <laughs> Our fair weather taxes, you don't want them. Let's see. So I, uh, I do have a degree in pastry and, um, I do specialize also in chocolate and sugar work. I am president of the board of Icing Smiles, which is my PSA for the day, which is a nonprofit organization that creates custom celebration cakes for kids with medical illness and in medical crisis. So we're kind of the make a wish of cakes nationwide. I do a lot of television and, uh, just that area of my career alone. I have a lot of hats that I put on at different times. Um, everything from physically making cakes, like I do and nailed it for people to copy, to mm. helping culinary producers, consulting with executive producers and networks on creating new shows, helping with contestants on the back end. Uh, they've kind of like used me every which way they possibly can use me in that industry. I test products for companies. Um, I have a huge list of sponsors. I do videos and things like that, which I actually just started a new series today. I'm like, I I write magazine articles and stuff like that for people, test recipes. I'm writing my own cookbook, developing my own TV show. Then I have three kids. I'm a single mom. Yeah. So there you go. There's just a little, uh, there's a smidge. Just a few things you've got going on. Just a couple. So Ms. Charity, if I could kind of channel that, then you started with traditional training with pastries and that and and now you have like this giant umbrella of things you can do and you do could you talk a little bit about maybe how that started did you start by like working as a pastry chef and one thing led to another was this something you sought after to get into the world of you know helping kids like through make a wish style cakes like you said through the smiles program and and then television or how did that all kind of evolve once you were in school in that? How does that happen? Yeah, that's tricky. Okay. So um, I have a very odd path, but what's interesting is my very wide span of experience has really all come together and is really working for me in everything I'm doing right now, which is kind of crazy. So I actually started off interested in food as a little kid and I, tell the story that I cre- I, I uh, destroyed two easy bake ovens when I was little. Um, <laughs> after those two, my grandmother and mother decided it's time to teach me on the big oven. Um, I tapped their knowledge out at about age 12. And then I just hit the books because I'm a bookworm. Baking is 100% chemistry. So there's my 100% plug for science for the day. Your savory chefs will tell you they don't bake. Like they, they just don't know. They don't touch that with a 10 foot pole because it's not something you can just throw junk in together and voila, here comes this great dish. No, that's not how this works. Um, you have to be precise. 
you have to know your ingredients and know how they interact with one another. And then with heat and cold and all, you know, all kinds of stuff, it's much, much tougher. So I, uh, when I went to culinary school, I also went to uh, like regular university. I was a business major with a double minor in French and voice. Then I went to France, went to culinary school. I've actually worked at Sundance for Robert Redford and his restaurants. I just kind of always, uh, worked within food, even the times I wasn't working within food. I mean, I've been a radio DJ. I've driven stunt vehicles that are military vehicles in the uh, film and entertainment industry. I've done a lot of, I've been, uh, I've done uh, graphic design and creative services and stuff for um, a grocery brokerage firm. So I know the food industry, even from the grocery store end. Then my family's been in farming since the like 1800s. And so I know a ton about the farming end of, of food too. So I kind of like go the span, but uh, when I finished culinary school, I went to work here in San Diego for a gal that had been on food network challenge twice. She was the only cake house in the area that did crazy, funky, rad cakes. Like I liked to do. And so I went to work for her and after working for her and somebody else that came in and like bought out her place and I worked for them for a few years, then I went off on my own. And as, and, but while I was working for those other places is when ultimate cake off from TLC, uh, tracked me down. They saw my work online and this was like early, early online, um, the MySpace days. I'm sure all of y'all don't even remember those days, except you're trying to, um, so that I'm starting to show my age. Um, so they, yeah, then they, they tracked me down. And so I was the first episode in season two. And then they liked us so much and they got extended. They got uh, four more episodes extended on their season. So they asked us back. So we came back for the last episode of that season also. Uh, What I can tell you about that, because that is now just snowballed into, I am one of the most called and requested people in all sorts of capacities. Like like I was explaining to you in the television production, culinary television production, because I already knew the back end of production. I knew what it took to create a show. And I knew what the camera guys were there to do. The audio guys were there to do. The grips were there to do. The executive producers, the director, you know, even the PAs of the production assistants were there to like clean up things and stuff like that. The culinary producer, because I'd done back end production stuff with in the entertainment. So when I came on set, I don't come on set like, oh, it's all about me. I'm the cake artist. It's all about me, you know, bow worship. No, 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 no. I'm there understanding that they all have a job to do. I'm there to help them make good television. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm automatically making friends with everybody in the crew, making sure I try to memorize everybody's names because we're going to work together for about a week and make sure I call people by their name, like make sure you use somebody's name over and over and over. There's another big trick just in life that will serve you very well. As everyone learned that I was really easy to work with and that I made good television, then I just got called all the time. And it's, I mean, for 12 years, it's just a snowball effect to where I don't go a week without getting two to three phone calls. I mean, in some fashion, somebody's asking me for something in television. It's crazy. Wow. So, you know, it just, but you get to be known as something that's somebody that's easy to work with, that knows their stuff, um, you know, that uh, is helpful, that doesn't steer people wrong. Um, you know, it's, it, it would be a rare thing that you'd come across somebody that would say a bad word about me. That's wow. for sure. Because I've definitely tried to keep my nose clean you know, within cake and pastry and TV, just to make sure that I, you know, I'm not an enabler. I'm not like a yes girl. I certainly have my boundaries, my healthy, all that, but people know that I know my stuff and that I will be helpful and, you know, I can assist them. And then for sure, I will call on them if I need some assistance for something else. So yeah, it's one of those, again, scratch your back. Sure. Scratch your back. I think you brought up so many great points, uh, networking again, treating others well. You obviously have a reputation for good follow through to easy to work with in that. And I think that does carry a long way. It sounds like, uh, and I may be jumping to a conclusion, but you say yes to many opportunities. Has that been a theme over the years that you felt like I might not be f- fully knowing what this is, but I'm, I'm willing to try and learn and go f- and get better at it or... 
Definitely, definitely. Um, I I do have a thirst for knowledge. I always have, and so when opportunities come to me, I have this. I have a thing up in in my office, and it says something to the effect of, "If you just wait for opportunities to come to you, you'll miss out on all of them." So you have to go out there and seek out opportunities, and you know, and you knock on the doors and see if they open. It's not so much that you sit down and you wait for doors to open for you. It's not how it works. So um, you have to be proactive, you have to be assertive. I wouldn't say aggressive, that doesn't really get you far, but assertive certainly does. And there is, you know, there's a fine line there. Yeah, so I, I, I've really been blessed by the many opportunities that have come along. I mean, I've, I've got five or six of them right now that I'm juggling going, okay, how do I, and then, yeah, I mean, I never know when my phone rings what's happening. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's fun in a way, but it's also a little crazy, but I'll, I'll give you a quick little story about how I even got started and nailed it. So I had done 12 or 12 or so other shows with Food Network and TLC, worked with a number of production companies. And I got a phone call from this one guy who wasn't from LA. He was you know, originally from Oregon. So he was a little bit more normal. And um, one of the few guys I trusted pretty much. So my son saw that um, my phone was ringing and it was um, this one person. And he, he goes, you going to get that? I'm like, no, I'm thinking no. <laughs> and he's like, well, why not? I mean, and you just tell him no. I'm like, oh. but I let it go to voicemail. He called right back. And I was like, oh, geez, that's not a good sign. And so I picked it up and I couldn't even, I didn't even get a chance to say hello before he just goes, he goes, first of all, thank you for picking up. And second of all, before you hang up on me, this is for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm listening. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm listening. And so then he pitched me the whole nailed it concept and um, what they would want me to do on the show, which didn't end up fully being what came to f actual fruition as a brand new show things change but nevertheless and you know now i've done 49 episodes of that show and we've been up for two emmy awards or two years for three emmys total one for one and two for another you know i mean it happened to be this gigantic hit thing on netflix and it's my favorite show absolutely it's favorite. so funny so um you know and I, I made a bunch more really really great connections it's a you know a family for three years i've worked with them um, this year, finally, because we, I, I couldn't get them to go back to being what it was supposed to be as far as I was concerned, because if your face isn't on television, then you're not staying relevant. It's just the way it is. And it doesn't really matter in what capacity your face is on TV. You've got to keep your face on TV to be relevant. Well, my hands were on TV a lot, not my face. So finally, I just said, okay, guys, you know, if we're not going to get any further with this, if we can't like come to some sort of arrangement, you know, this is starting to actually cut me off at the knees with my career. So I'm going to have to, you know, say, see ya. So, so I did. And, you know, now I've got my own show I'm developing. I've got all kinds of things in the works and you know, it's great, but you know, it takes a lot of work. It's not, this stuff does not come easy. I've been doing television for 12 years. I've been up for a lot of judging positions on a bunch of new shows and you just have to keep working hard. But if you slack off, then things aren't going to come. So it goes back to that opportunity thing I was talking about. You have to really like go out there and make your own opportunities a lot. Wow. Now that, that you're giving great advice to follow through the consistency, staying relevant in that. You said yes to a lot of uh, incredible things. And sometimes you said yes to things that you wish you wouldn't have in the end, right. but all yeah. learning experiences and all yeah. connections made in that. Really quick, I think you've said a lot of great tips and advice in that. Is there just anything that's been some of the big highlights of your career that you've really enjoyed and been proud of or that, that just make you smile when you look back and think of all that you've accomplished so far in it? I really feel like you're at your critical mass, like you're about to explode even more. So a lot's coming your way. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. Hope I didn't just to put that. college. Right. Let's hope. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of great things happening with Icing Smiles. We have a sugarthon that's coming about. So because of COVID, 
we used to do a lot of in-person fundraisers all over the country in conjunction with cake trade shows, which are not happening, you know, didn't happen all last year and are not happening so far this year. Another one just canceled last night. I would say my involvement in Icing Smiles is definitely one of those pinnacle things. Oh, let me explain what that is about. So two of my kids, two of my three kids have medical uh, situations or problems or whatever you want to call them. Um, I have one kid with leukemia. She's been dealing with that since she was seven. She's 21. And then I have another kid who has spondyl arthritis and Crohn's. But anyway, so that's how I um, was introduced to Icing Smiles. And the gal got about two sentences into her pitch about what she was about. And I went, stop, I'm in. Just that's all you have. I don't need to talk about it anymore. I'm in. Um, and then very quickly, she asked me to come be a member of the board. And now I'm president of the board. And we're doing this new huge thing called the Sugar Thon. So it'll be a virtual variety show online that I will live host but all of the, all the acts will be videotaped and then we're stringing them together, but I'll break in live and stuff like that. We, so here's, here's another networking thing for you. So I know people that, I, mean, I never really thought I'd be bringing in my DJ time and, and other times like that, right? For my cake stuff. You never know. You never know. I used to dance at the, at the Brown Derby in Hollywood all the time back in the swing dance when swing dancing was huge. And Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, who actually has played the Super Bowl before, they were friends of mine. And I have kind of lost touch with them over the years. But um, I reached out to their manager and sent a couple pictures of, of us from back in the day at the Brown Derby. And I said, hey, remember me? <laughs> well, this is what I'm doing now. And I could really use you guys performing in our sugar thon. They said yes, instantly. I mean, awesome. and Scotty, the lead singer, is going to make a, a cute video for us, you know, about our, our mission and stuff. And then uh, one of the, um, the, the big folks in the vanilla industry that I know, um, she's super good friends with Smashing Pumpkins and Verve Pipe. Mm. So we, we've got them coming in to like perform in our sugar thon. Justin Willman, who, uh, if you guys recall, he does Magic for Humans on Netflix. He's a magician, but he was also the host of Cupcake Wars and Cake Wars for all that time. So I know him from there. He's been an, a judge on... Uh, on nailed it for us before so i know him so we're getting him to like come be a magician on the show so you see what i mean like yeah. all these crazy connections everywhere and yet i'm pulling them in to come be you know performers in our sugar thon to help us raise money for icing smiles i mean it's nuts but then i would have to say that you know getting to getting to the final episode in season five and season seven of Halloween Wars and the amazing things we put out, um, all four episodes and then five episodes of that show. Uh, very proud of that. I've been asked to, uh, to attempt some pretty crazy things like, but to make a fully edible lava lamp. Um, so people hit me with things like that, like crazy ideas, like, can it be done? I'm like, well, let's try. <laughs> sure. So we did sugar, chocolate, and molecular gastronomy, you know, new products, you know, trying those, you know, trying to come up with new product ideas. And, um, and then, uh, you know, my, the show idea I have that we're developing, they'll be my show. Um, that is going to be one of the big feathers in my cap as soon as, um, we're ready to shop it to networks. If I get a network to buy that, okay, wait, we're, we're talking positive. When I get a network to buy that up, uh, that's going to be a big celebration day for sure. Um, been working towards that for many, 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 many years. So, um, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited about the concept. It's going to be really fun. It's very different. I still do cakes. I still do take some orders. Um, luckily being you know, in business for myself, I pick and choose what orders I take and when, uh, for when I'm going to be in town and when I'm not, but you know, it's, it's a juggle. It's definitely a juggle. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, I really appreciate you going through all the, it was like a confetti explosion of talking <laughs> about all the different things you got going on, but I uh, have been accused of that before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I I, I think it I think it shows really well and I think that should get it uh, gets me excited and students too when you're passionate about what you do and you're intentional about making those connections helping others but also never knowing when someone might be able to open a door for you and vice versa I think it's an important skill that when people really consistently push it can it can really make a huge difference and it, and it shows through the success you've already had and the success an even greater success you're about to. So congrats to that. And thank, thank you, you so much uh, for your time. This has been uh, absolutely thrilling and just energizing to hear everything you've Good. got going on.